hey y'all welcome back to the channel your channel can we talk with monique i am monique thank you so much for joining me today please remember to like and subscribe and if you haven't already done so hit that little bell so you'll be notified of my upcoming uh videos and podcasts so um today i want to talk about go back to the basics the nine traits of narciss of a narcissistic personality and i'm going to enlarge this um, screenshot and I'll leave a link below so you can access this information because this is information I took. I'm not remember. I don't remember the source, but I'll put the source down below. So let's get into it. So, you know, this channel is dedicated to those of us who have been in toxic relationships and or, um, relationships with individuals who have NPD or on that spectrum, or maybe even, um, sociopaths or, um, you know, those of that nature, but these are some of the characteristics and they come from the DSM five, which, um, is the manual that psychiatrists, psycho psychologists use in diagnosing individuals with these characteristics. Right. So I'm going to try to um, enlarge this. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to try to enlarge it and we're going to talk about the traits. And, um, so that way you can see a little better. Let's see. Okay. So let's read this. Narcissistic personality disorder is a condition where a collection of personality traits associated with the ego have become oppressive. And the more traits that are present at the same time, the higher up the person, the narcissistic scale a person becomes. So basically they're saying the more traits on this list that a person has, the higher up on the spectrum. So the spectrum starts at a low end and it goes up to the higher end. And the more traits from this particular list, then um, the person is on that uh, on the scale. So let's look at some of these traits. Traits, and there's nine traits. You can have all of them, or you can have some. But I think in order to be diagnosed with NPD or narcissistic personality disorder, you I think you have to have four or five of these. So let's talk about these. Um, number one, grandiosity, exaggerated sense of self worth. So these individuals think very highly of themselves. They think that they're better than other individuals. They think they are slick, sly, smarter in ways. And go back to my other video guys that I did on the gentleman who had anti-personality anti disorder, anti-social personality disorder. Um, and one of the things he said was that he felt that he was better than other people, that he felt he was smarter than other individuals. So he had this in, in grandiosity um, about himself. He felt that he could uh, outsmart individuals. So go back and look at that video. So the exaggerated sense of self-worth. So any of you guys who have been in relationships with these individuals, you may have noted that they feel that way. They may not have come out and told you that way, but based on their behavior. Um, let's see. I need these spectacles, y'all. Two, success, dreaming and fantasizing of success. This is something that I don't know. I'm not with the individuals. I don't recall them telling me about dreaming or fantasizing about success. I, the people I was with, but I knew of some other individuals who were always talking about, you know, maybe owning a business and always trying to do these business deals. Um, so dreaming and fantasizing of success. Number three, uniqueness, wholehearted believe that they're unique. They believe that they're like God. They believe that there's no one like them, that they're special. I think one time the person was like, oh, you'll never meet anybody like me because I'm unique. And you know, there's no other person like me. They literally told me that. Let's see for admiration an overwhelming need to be admired. So these individuals, they like the attention they like that's why they need the constant sources of supply because they need admiration they won't tell you that but just based on their behavior and what they do they need to be admired liked coddled loved you know they need that attention I don't like the word admiration I think it's more attention seeking but I guess you know it could be used interchangeably Okay, five, entitlement. This is something I've seen all the time. They feel entitled. They expect favorable treatment. They expect you to cater to them. They feel like they should get special treatment. Um, and I think we see that a lot. If you've been in a relationship or been raised by one or family members, they have that sense of entitlement. So that's five, guys, right? Six, exploitative. Um, 
will manipulate and take advantage of others. This is a classic, oh my God, they are very exploitative, very manipulative, and they're always willing to take advantage of a situation. And if they do anything for you, there's always something behind it. So there's always a ploy, a plot behind it. And they're always willing to um, hone in on people's vulnerabilities and weaknesses. So the exploitative things is something I've seen a lot uh, five and the entitlement, uh, they are always wanting to be, um, get, have attention. I really wish they put that as attention seeking, um, uniqueness, feeling that they're just, you know, like God, that success one. I didn't see that a lot. I'm not sure if you guys saw that the dreaming and fantasizing of success, because if they're dreaming and fantasizing of it, that doesn't necessarily mean they're telling you about it and the grandiosity they, yeah, that, that I've seen. This one, number seven, that that is the kicker for me. This is one where they have no empathy. They don't care for others, their feelings. Don't get sick with the Rona virus. And you guys know I'm using the word Rona because YouTube doesn't really like talking about this thing. But they, if you die in, they don't care. And if you get sick with the Rona, they don't care. Their lack of empathy. This is like one of the main, ooh, this is a characteristic that you can find in these individuals, okay? So if they don't have some of these, this one here, number seven, they got that right there. Eight, envious, oh my God. The enviousness, you won't see it until later on or sometimes after you discover that this person is jealous, envious. They believe people are envious of them, but, They'll always say, oh, this person is this or this person is that or this one is out to get me or this. But it's really they are envious of others. Um, but they do have this weird thing. I oh, I never really thought with the people in my lives that they were envious of me. I always they would always talk about others being envious of them. And I was like, no, I don't think so. But as time went on, you know, depending on the situation, you could see that they were envious of others. Okay. And then nine domineering, they can come across as very arrogant, you know, just feeling like they're better than others. And if you watch that video, that person will tell you that they have this sense of, you know, this exaggerated sense of self, but they feel that they, they're very arrogant. They're like, you know, um, I did that commentary on the gentleman who had antisocial personality disorder. And I had trolls saying to me, um, you were being mean to him and, you know, you just don't want to admit that people who are doctors and lawyers have those type of traits. And I'm like, yeah, they do. And, uh, these are the same people who will kill you and, uh, pass a polygraph and ride around in the car with your body in it and not care. So what are you talking about? Um, this person was saying he was manipulative. He, you know, manipulated people that he would move to violence, you know, if you kind of cornered him. But anyhow, um, these are the nine characteristics and a lot of people who are abusive. And if you're in an abusive relationship, you can probably see some, if not all. And if the, the more characteristics that the person has, the, the higher, on the spectrum, uh, that they are. So, you know, uh, it says when a true narcissistic personality is challenged, they can become unpredictable and dangerous, highlighting just how big their ego has become and how adversely they react when that is threatened. So if you threaten their small sense of self and, and people who have been in relationships and I've experienced this, they can become violent. If you threaten them, they can become dangerous. I've experienced that. These people are not to be taken lightly. And that's why I am an advocate for survivors because I'm a survivor myself. And these things we have to go over. So being that we're on quarantine, some of us are on quarantine with these individuals or lockdown, remember some of these things. If you, you know, they, they, the, the more of these characteristics that they have and they're not good characteristics, they're all negative, then, um, the higher up on the spectrum they are to malignant and the more, and it says when a narcissistic personality is challenged or you 
impart a narcissistic injury, oh my God, they can become unpredictable. They can become violent and start raging and they can become dangerous. Okay. Cause they have to protect that fragile, fragile ego, that small sense of self that they have of themselves. But the one, but the, the ones that stand out to me and the individuals that I was involved with, and I'm talking family members, I'm talking in, um, close relationships was the lack of empathy, exploitative, very manipulative, envious, very domineering. They always wanted to have be the limelight or have the attention on them. Um, they had this sense of grandiosity, which was out of this world. And that sense of that was the ones that I noticed the most. But the ones that stood up and that's how I started learning and starting becoming quote unquote woke was when I started seeing I had a a medical crisis and it was just a clear lack of empathy, the manipulative behavior and just the enviousness of it, of the individuals. Right. So this I'm going to leave a little link to this below. And what are some of the characteristics that you um, are aware of? in the person that, or the persons that you've dealt with in your life. Um, did you see the, um, did you see the, any of these nine traits of a narcissistic personality? Did you see some of them? Which ones were the ones that stood out to you to help you understand what you were dealing with? But I'd like to go back to the basics. This is what I learned about when I first got on YouTube and started watching other people's channels, but these were these different traits, right? And how they are diagnosed. Most of them are not diagnosed because they don't think anything is wrong with them. Um, and they're definitely not going to therapy unless they're getting ready to be hauled their asses off the jail or, um, they're getting ready to lose a good source of supply or some money. Um, and their wives or their husbands are getting ready to divorce them. They'll go then, but still it's not going to work out because they will typically try to manipulate the therapist that's there to see them. For goodness sake, this is a, it's a hot mess. But anyway, these are the nine traits. It's good to look over this and see. Um, let's see if I can make this any bigger, but yeah, this is, you can make it bigger. Um, and I will leave the link where I got this from. And, um, it's just always good to go over certain things and to see, uh, where you are with certain things. And that way, you know, it just keeps a refresher in your head. And for other new people who might be watching this channel, you might, um, be able to just see these things and be in a relationship or have some friends or acquaintances and they display some of those traits and you're like, they're not quite right. And then they may display all of them. And this is a way um, that you can utilize in knowing, wait a minute, something is not right here. You're not trying to diagnose anyone, but if they display four or five or six of these characteristics, you, then, you know, you're dealing with somebody who's toxic. Number one, two on that NPD or narcissistic personality disorder on that spectrum. And you can start to deal with them accordingly. Um, like going no contact, but, um, anyway, uh, let me know what personality traits you saw in the individuals that you were dealing with that stood out to you. Like I said, for me, It became the lack of empathy and their manipulation and just being envious. Um, Yeah. And the entitlement. Oh, wait a minute. The the entitlement. They just felt like they were entitled to whatever. But anyway, guys, please remember to like and subscribe. Ring that little bell and I will continue to bring you content for us survivors and even for new subscribers where we can learn more about these individuals. And to me, this is a good tool. It's a tool because you can think back and go, hmm, is this person exploitative, very manipulative? They're always trying to take advantage of others, getting over. You know, you know, some people that just want to get over to get over. Do they have a lack of empathy? When I was in the hospital and had surgery, you might be thinking to yourself, did they come? They didn't even call. You can start putting the pieces of the puzzle together just using this little tool. 
But guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all my new subscribers. I truly, truly appreciate you guys and continue to watch. Please share these videos. It's important guys, because the way this world is going and being in quarantine and lockdown, we gotta know what we dealing with here with some of these folks, right? All right, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Can We Talk with Monique. Peace, y'all.